Hey everybody, Ben with Classic Firearms here. I am so happy and pleased to be able to present to you a new group of Yugoslavian SKS rifles that we just received in. As far as we know, these were exclusive to Classic Arms. We bought all of them, folks. Uh, it was quite an undertaking, but we have been assured of the quality and we weren't disappointed. I've had the opportunity to look at three or four crates now. They've looked great. Uh, just a moment ago, as I was walking through the warehouse, I saw this assembly set up. They were taking pictures to put on our website and put on our individual ads. So you will see this actual picture of this weapon on our website in the ad for the Yugo. While it was set up here, I wanted to take the opportunity to come out and do the introduction to our video for them. Here's what we're going to do. These things are palletized, several crates on a pallet. There's 10 guns in each crate. I'm going to have my warehouse guys move a couple of crates out into the parking lot where we have really good light. We're going to open the crates, let you see down inside them for the first time just as we're seeing them. They're all banded up right now. Cut them open. We're all going to see together what we got in. If the samples that I've seen so far in the three or four crates that I've looked in are any indication, we're all going to be very pleased because this is a beautiful group of Yugo SKSs based on what I've seen so far. Anyway. We're going to take a little break here. We're going to have our guys move some out into the parking lot. And we're going to open some crates and have a big time looking at Yugo SKS rifles. Be right back. All right, we're outside in the parking lot now. You can see we've got a couple of pallets unopened of our Yugo SKSs. If it gets loud out here with background noise, please forgive us. We've got a trucking company beside us. Not much we can do about that. But I wanted you to see a couple of pallets before we broke them down to see that we're actually taking the straps off and going inside the crates. So what we see for the first time is the same thing that you'll see for the first time. Uh, no camera tricks. We want you to see a fair representation of what we're getting. Before we break into them, Aaron, come in here close. The markings on these are very interesting. They appear to come to have come out of Slovenia before the breakdown of the Yugoslavia Republic. Uh, you can see some of the, you get this one, this is a good one see some of the dates here we've got a 2004 date on this 2007 date on this uh, through the end of 2012 I don't know what all of this represents or actually means but we do have serial number counts for each along with the arsenal tags on both of them and as I say oh look at this one here this is a good one you can see the Slovenia state seal on that one Republic of Slovenia so that looks pretty good. Ernie, if I break these open, can you grab Matt and uh, Cody there? And let's start setting some down, maybe waist high so we can open them up and take a look at them. Let me get these scraps cut. All right, very good. Ernie, grab this one right here. And Ernie, if you'll turn it, set it over there so I can open it up from the front, please. That's good. And then, Ernie, if you go around back and do the same thing here for me. Guys, if you'll break this one while we're going through that, do the same thing here. Come on, look at the Super Bowl train. Come on, follow me, Aaron. Let's open one, see what we got. As you can see, they're stacked in groups of 10 on this side. I don't have any idea what this is. We're seeing a difference in the way the oilers and cleaning kits and so forth. There may be some differences and variances with the accessories. You may see some plastic oilers, you may see some metal oilers, you may see no oilers. We're not guaranteeing that. We're guaranteeing a rifle 
we're guaranteeing a leather pouch because we've seen that everywhere. Some form of a sling. Here's a ratty nylon sling. Here's a leather sling. Here's a better canvas sling. They're older pouches. That one has an oiler in it. Some do, some don't. Again, we're not guaranteeing for the accessories other than we will pack them with the accessories that are in the crate. Some of them also have manuals. Some appear to not. We'll see what's in the other crates. But I do want you to see the rifles. These are packed in heavy cosmoline. But gorgeous, gorgeous rifle. And you see they seem to be consistent within that crate. Aaron, let's go look at another. Uh, even better. If we're talking hand select, I think I would call these hand select. Look at this. That is a beautiful rifle. They all appear pretty much the same. Did you get a good shot down in there, Eric? Look over in the accessory compartments too. <coughs> These come with the troop issue books. As you can see, again, some form of a sling and pouch. But just a gorgeous, look at this rifle. Just gorgeous, if I can make that sit get a shot from a distance. I don't want to walk in front of you, but we're going to go to another one here. Ernie, if you'll set those two down, that'll be good enough. We'll have all we need. We'll pull this out with a little set support lift coming in front of us, or behind us. Ah, here we go again. In some of the crates we opened earlier inside the warehouse, some of these rifles were fairly dry. These are in the heavier Cosmoline for better protection. Ernie's about to push me over here, so bear with me. You got it, Ernie? There you go, pick her up. Tilt her back, you'll be all right. Let's give you an idea. Set a rifle up there. Gorgeous rifles. Come on around with me here. You see the crates vary. This one had a hasp on top of it. Somebody had a lock on it at one time. We never know. And again, sorry about the background noise. This group of rifles has a little bit lighter stock, more of a honey blonde stock. Can you see this front sight, Aaron? I'm not guaranteeing all of these to have the night sights, and even if they do, I'm not guaranteeing them to still be active. But this one happened to have the night sight flipped up. And Aaron, if you can scan here, from the front maybe, all of those have the night sight inserts. Flip up, flip down. Or from the top. I got them all flipped up now. That's common to the Yugoslavs. And again, let's get a shot of that great looking rifle. Let's go to the next one. That's okay guys, y'all can look in those, get a good look. Aaron, get a shot of our warehouse guys. These guys love rifles more than Anybody I know, they're working in the perfect place in a firearms industry. Uh, usually, we don't have to pay these guys in, in checks or cash. We just hand them a rifle at the end of the week sometimes. They're always very happy with we'll that. Work we'll work for firearms. Said Matt. Look at this. Unbelievable. 
people always ask me, say, Ben, what do I do about the Cosmoline on the rifle? How do I clean it off? A lot of people use different things. The thing I've always liked to use is anything petroleum-based, gasoline, kerosene, diesel fuel. Don't smoke while you're doing it. It's not a good idea. <laughs> but uh, mineral spirits is excellent without being very caustic. And it'll just cut that Cosmoline right off. Put it on a rag or spray it on with a bottle and then dry right, rub it off of there. Cuts it right off and leaves a good uh, light oil finish when you use mineral spirits. Again, my hands are really nasty with Cosmoline now, but these are coming with the technical manuals. I can't guarantee that all of them will, but most that we've seen have and other accessories. Let's look at a few more. Oh, very interesting. Life is like a box of chocolates, they said Forrest Gump. You never know what you're going to get. No dividers in this box. The accessories appear to be in the bottom, but still 10 rifles and very, very nice rifles at that. We will be offering a hand select on these rifles for an upcharge. Uh, we can pretty easily, when they're in the crates, identify the best one out of a row or something like that. That's what we go with with our hand select. Let's open another. Really clean crate. This is a good one to talk about the rifle a little more in depth. Yugoslav rifles are some of the top tiered SKS rifles because they're all milled. If you'll look here, they have a milled bolt instead of a stamped bolt. A one piece milled trigger group on the weapon, no stampings on that. They all have the heavy lug barrel, so the barrels are actually screwed into the receivers. And then the lugs are welded in place and set in place rather than being pinned in place. So they hit space properly and hold for higher chamber pressures. That also is supposed to increase the accuracy on the weapon. They all have the blade bayonet have adjustable gas systems with the flip-up grenade sights on them. They all incorporate, as we've already shown you, well, that was an interesting bug, the, uh, the night sights. And they all have a grenade launcher compensator on the end. Some of the compensators are simply a grenade launcher. Some are also compensators. This one is the compensator. As you can see, it is ported all the way around as well as being the grenade launcher. Not only that, they're just a beautiful, beautiful weapon. Let's open up one more, we'll call it a day. I think we've seen a good cross section of them. Hello, male lady. Hi, how are you? Good, you wanna be on camera? No thanks. Okay, come on around behind then. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't intend to have the best for last, but you want to talk about some beautiful rifles, let's take a look here. Cody, how dirty are your hands? Not too bad. Not too bad. Pull out one of those owner's manuals there, just enough that people can see. We've seen these different ways. Some are plastic coated. Some have the hard covers. Some haven't had any at all. I think what we've seen so far, about 60 or 80% are coming with the original owner's manual, so that's nice. Again, clean kit, maybe. Leather pouch, certainly. Whatever's in the crate with the rifle is what we're gonna box up. You're buying the rifle, whatever you get as an accessory is just gravy, so to speak. But uh, we're very proud of these. Bye bye, male lady. Beautiful Yugo SKSs. You don't get a shot at these things anymore. Uh, they're going away quickly. Good surplus, hard to find. If you want one, I would encourage you to get it now. We're going to have them up on our site very shortly, so come to take a look at the site for the details, read Brutus' description, and as always, check us out at www.classicfirearms.com. Hold the presses, hold the presses. Postscript to the last video. I've got my man Matt here with me. Matt not only is an international playboy, but he also has a couple of degrees and uh, is quite a bit more intelligent than he looks. He's very, very smart about everything international. Uh, <laughs> once we concluded the video, he translated some of this stuff for us. So Matt, tell the folks there watching at home uh, 
what you can tell us about these rifles based on what you're seeing. What this is right here, this is actually, you see the three mountain peaks with the teardrop, it's a symbol of Slovenia with the cross swords through it. It's a symbol of the Slovenian army. Slovenia, if you're not uh, familiar with it, is uh, one of the former republics of Yugoslavia. So each and every one of these were actually, uh, have come from some army depot in Slovenia. These were Slovenian army issued SKSs. Yeah, and I don't know if they're refinished or if they just got turned in that nice. What we're seeing are beautiful rifles. They don't appear to have a lot of military use on them. Maybe they were issued just before the AK-74s came to prominence. Probably been stored for years. Yeah, and have been stored away in this kind of condition or they may be arsenal refinished, I don't know. I do know you're looking at a really nice rifle. Thanks for the education, bud, I appreciate it. Uh, again, check out all the details, www.classicfirearms.com.